Welcome aboard, sports fans. Welcome to Face to Face Games. It is Tuesday afternoon, sometime in March, and we've got PTL Top Cut action coming your way. We are your hosts. I'm Timbo Slice. I'm Moss Isley. Moss coming out of his vassal winter hibernation to join me on the streaming booth. Folks, we're going to have a nice, wholesome cast this evening. Uh, we got two of our PTL Top Gun aces duking it out to see who's going to come on to the Season 12 Finals. Yeah, it should be a great game, Tim. Um, Evan and uh, Kelvin sure as heck know each other and play each other fairly often. Yeah, I would agree. Now, Stevie Wonder, did you get a chance to play much in the Season 12 this year? Four games, then stop, Tim. Nice. Since so Season 4. It's a beautiful thing about the PTL. You show up, you rock four games out of the seven, you still get all the participation prizes, which are usually better than the Top Gun prizes. Exactly. <laughs> no, honestly, I've got uh, not a ton of time to play X-Wing, so when I do, I tend to focus just on competitive. Well, that's good. I mean, we, we try to get, offer our, our, um, our membership a, a fair balance of competitive play and our, and our mantra, which is to fly casual. And tonight is, although it's a Top Cut match of our, our season, both these players have played many games with each other. We are going to fly casual tonight. Yeah, what and, do you think uh, of these lists, Tim? I'm really excited to see this matchup, actually, because I think that both players have the tools necessary to swing it their way. A lot is just going to depend on the engagement. And you've got you know, two players playing, uh, in my opinion, something Very that's really lists. quintessentially them in their own play style as well. Yep. So why don't you take us through the list on the left, and I'll go through the, the list on the right there. Sure. So Evan's flying... Wedge, Pro Torp, uh, no big surprise. Uh, Nora, carrying Leia. Again, everything a Rebel Squad needs with expert handling. Um, and an arc, which is so nice. Uh, and then followed up by Luke with Pro Torps. Proton Torpedoes, who knew? They're still good. Yeah, they sure are. <laughs> I'll take you through the player on the right-hand side. Um, it is the nefarious, infamous Kelvin Lau. Um, one of our, our top ranking and top finishing uh, PTL members has um, a top four finish at a system open in yeah. last year. Kelvin's um, consistently a great player. Yeah, that top four finish at a system open w won him a ticket to Coruscant, which uh, I went along with him for, along with Devo, uh, Cam Murray, and Tristan from the GRX, and Kelvin managed to make it to the top eight, Yep, which was great. Good on him. And, and then just right recently uh, on the weekend that just uh, passed, actually, we had the Toronto System Open Series event here, and uh, he also placed top eight. So yep. um, consistent player. He's got his invitation to Worlds. He's, a, he's happy as a clam. He's probably going to be uh, helping to judge and ferry some of the our, our players around to some of the different events happening across the, the GTA in the next yep. few months. He is, of course, addicted to A-Wings, folks. We're talking, like, pathologically... Like, uh, no one is surprised <laughs> Kelvin's flying A-Wings. Um, <laughs> they're finally at the spot now where they're really competitive, and he certainly loves them. I love the the um, the, uh, the the loadout that he's got on his squad here, though. So he's taken four, four A-Wings. He's got the two PS5s, Lulo and Talison, just with Heroic. Yep. Um, we are going to try and keep a tally of how many times Heroic procs in this game. Oh, I'm putting yeah, the over-under at five. Ooh, um, I'll go under okay. on that, I think. Fair enough. Kelvin doesn't run in a lot of heroic in his squad. Looks like just Tally and Lulo. Yeah, it's Tally and Lulo, but look what he's done with the two PS1s. Intimidation. Yep. I just got to love it. It's great. They're in there for one reason, one reason only, and it's to throw blocks. You throw a block on somebody like Nora, you throw a block on somebody like Wedge, you reduce their agility by one, or even better, somehow you manage to get um, both <laughs> you know, block on one target. Yeah, and with that 180 arc, it is... So good. Just yeah. to flip it back, like it is so such a versatile ship. Their time on target is absolutely crazy. Well, pound for pound, I would argue that Lulo is up there with some of the best value in the game. Because let's yep. be honest. Same. Like you're not going to run a resistance squad, I feel like, without Lulo. Unless you're running five A's. But, I mean, you really see Lulo's a staple. Again, folks, when you defend or perform a primary attack, if you are stressed, you must be an X-Wing. Roll one fewer defense dice and one extra attack dice. So for 39 points, you're getting a essentially arc. an X-Wing that can decide to go really fast if it needs to. And shoot backwards. And shoot backwards. And have a great dial. Pretty much. Um, one less health. Yeah, less health. Yeah. Um, but 
still that value, there's a reason why we're seeing him everywhere. Nora taking that white, funky, medium base barrel roll there. Nora Wexley's ability, of course, folks, in both the Y-Wing and the ARC-170 is that while she defends, if there's an enemy ship at range 0-1, to one, she can add her favorite results. So she is Tanky. one of the few ships in the game that can actually add results. There's not too many that can. Um, and for her to have that kind of durability on the chassis that already have tons of hull and shields makes her a fantastic Leia carrier for one. Big um, time. A hell of a gun for two. Really happy if she's not in hyperspace. Yeah. Yeah, I think the ARC-170 is... Well, I mean, there's a very good chance that the ARC-170 is going to be um, prevalent as a Republic ship yep. um, in hyperspace because, you know, there's a lot of back and forth about the hyperspace format. Some people like it. Some people don't. I'm a fan. I'm a fan as well on one condition. I love the notion that you have five chassis per f faction. Four yeah. or five chassis. Yep. But I really want to see what the Wave 2, like the second edition, Same. Let's or the see second how rendition of the mix-up is. Because there's a couple of changes that we would make. And we'll talk about those when we get to the planning phase next time. Because we got action coming at us, Stevie. Yeah, what do you think, sure uh, who do you think Evan's going to use as his target priority here? He's locked... Um, he has locked one of the blue squadrons here. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, we don't have our teleprompter, so you have to paint pictures with your words, man. Yeah, I think he's going to pop Bastion. Bastion is worth the most points, so it's not a bad. And he's got the lowest agility, so then you're just chasing Kelvin's A-Wings. With Wedge That's and every, hard. Like with Wedge and Luke, I, I'd burn it down. Okay, so Protorp coming up quick. Um, spending the lock, re-rolling the three of them, getting hit, Two hit, hits crit. So that was wedge shooting. Takes two. Yep. Two shields, or does Kelvin keep the focus for uh, the follow-up shot? Oh, wow. So three shields. Yep. Shields down on Bastion. Pick keeping up the target focus lock. token. So Bastion's trigger now will yep. go for a target lock. Bastion's um, going to acquire a lock on wedge. Okay. Bastion's foils were closed, so he only rolls the two dice. Oh, so Bastion doesn't uh, actually get no, a target yeah, lock on himself. Not a damage to, it's not a damage card. It's only a damage card. It's not a thing. Uh, Rerolling for two, adding one with Nora, takes one. Plink off of the Nora's shields. Nothing to be afraid of. Got to burn it down. Yeah, you got to get lay off the board. And it's tough, too. I mean, Nora's thick. And she is sitting range one, so she's going to get that extra evade result. And against A-Wings, it's a really good ship against A-Wings. Yeah, well, I mean, the fact that uh, Evan got to land Nora within just within range one of one of the A-Wings basically gives him four free evades, yeah. five free evades if you shoot at him, right? So, Yeah, um, it's great. Especially on those two-die little pea shooters from range three. Speaking of which, that's there twice that Evan has rolled three eyeballs on his pro tower. Yeah, you should probably stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Keeping one, force with Luke. Yep. Hit double crit. Not a great result. Didn't see what the third Calvin die just is. Evaded oh, that. Just evaded it. Waste of six points there. Um, Pro yeah, Tour. That's brutal. It. Oh and boy. finally, Nora. Two crits on A Wing number five. So I think Kelvin just took one. Yep. Ooh. Okay, so Bastion has shot. No. I think Nora. Okay, that oh was no, A-Wing 5. A-Wing 5 shooting here. Going to shoot at Wedge. Wedge. Yeah, Everett's just going to pile onto Wedge. Wedge is worth the most points out of the two X-Wings, I mean. No, he's not. He's worth the least points. What nope. am I talking about? He's just really good against A-Wings, right? Like, it yeah, takes away one of their agility. strongest yeah, abilities, true. that high agility. Um, so you want to pull that off quick. Yeah. 100%. Okay. So, A-Wing shooting here, focusing for one, dodged. That was Wedge dodging at range three there. So, I'm wondering if Kelvin just pops two X-Wings. And Kelvin has X -wings expired his and shots, runs away. and off we go. Wedge down to three damage, or uh, down to three hull, I should say. Nora took a plink, and Kelvin made it out of that turn with only three shields off of Bastion and one sh plink off of Blue Squadron. Recruit. So there's really... Yeah, that is a great engagement, I think, for Kelvin. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's almost ideal because here you have um, A wings numbers four, sorry, four and five, which are ideally placed to literally just get in there and gum up the formation. Yep. And then you'll have Lulo probably doing a leisurely two forward um, focus rotate or maybe just focus. Um, I mean, you essentially saw Evan blow two torps and Kelvin walked away with four shields down. Yeah, no, I, I uh, think we probably see a three bank boost rotate from Lulo to get behind Nora. I'm guessing a two bank from uh, A wing number four to get in there and block Nora. Perhaps a one turn from A wing five. Um, Elv Kelvin has to make the decision about whether or not he actually wants to block, blow, block or blow past the formation yeah. and, and turn. I guess the guns you could do around. a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, and block up a little bit, and then just gun through with the others. It's very um, true. I mean, you could get, you could take the two PS one A wings and zoom them past the formation, block with Lulo and Talison, and then just get in there with Bastion as well. I mean, Bastion's in a rough place, even if you do block the wings. Uh, even if you block Evan's list, Evan still fires before you do. Yep. And then he's going to be able to probably wipe out Bastion no matter where he goes. And you've got to be really worried about losing Wedge this yeah. turn. Like, he's ding down enough to where unless Evan plays him carefully, easily could lose Wedge. Yeah, agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Um, and if he loses Wedge before Kelvin loses even a A-Wing, this is going to be a quick game. Well, both of our players playing in a pretty good place. They've played each other before. They're very, uh, they're very used to these types of maneuvers. So Kelvin has one dial left to set. I believe it's Bastion. No, it's not. It's one of his A wings. It's one of his A wings. And let's hmm. see. What would I do here? I think I would take one in maybe and block. Um, so I'd use number one. I think I'd go in hard and block out Nora. Yeah. Um, Nora might try to turn away, and it would probably block that, too. Yeah, Nora needs to decide who she wants to try and keep Ark on. I think it's fair to say she'll probably get her free evade this turn, and she'll probably she not get will. an action yeah. otherwise. Uh, I mean, the other thing that you could think is that um, uh, Evan could, of course, use Leia in this turn. Program red maneuvers in yep. with no... I think Kelvin will sniff that out, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, there's no, um, there's no reason not to put in the red maneuvers. Like, if you put in a Talon roll on either of them, of the X-Wings, either your three turn gets blocked and you don't turn around. Yeah, or you do complete the Talon roll, and then you get Arc on one of the A-Wings that's trying to block you or get past you. Big time. Fearless leader, league boss, Mr. Devin Monkhouse, in the house. On time. Finally looks like he's rested up from that system open series weekend. For Lord almighty, I've never seen you work so hard. Kind of looked like a Mortal Kombat carrier character at the end of the weekend. Finish him. Just standing there. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you here, sir. Um, we're all anxious to see what the PTL Season 12 participation prizes look like. I know that Stephen Moss played four games and dropped so he could get them. <laughs> Veteran turret gunner, alt art, beautiful. Okay, so we've got Kelvin deciding what he's going to do here. We're going to two-turn one of the A-wings around and rotate the arc. Folks, one of the things that I really wanted to bring to light is exactly what Kelvin has just done. If you notice, he places the template down, and he does the arc rotation in the air before he places the ship down. Yeah. Definitely a courteous thing to do because it's very easy to... Um, nudge or bump millimeters or do any of that stuff when you're trying to rotate those really tight turret indicator arcs on the ship. So a good little uh, pro tip from Kelvin there for everybody to pick up on. Yeah, he's really missing a prime opportunity to cheat. It's true. Mm. It's true. Wasted opportunity. Missed opportunity, right? right? Like, it is a may, not a must. Right? Oh, come on, Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. We got a four straight. No, we have so a So he is turn. not... No, he That's went for it and just got blocked. I don't think that there was too much to worry about. Either you get a block or you get the Kate turn. So yeah. um, took the bet, didn't win this one. I'm really curious to see where Talison's going to go. She's going to get bumped by... Oh, boy. Is she going to get bumped? She is uh, not. No, nice she move. completes the maneuver, and she will be able to use her pilot ability. Okay, so she's going to focus rotate. 
right after I just said the whole see, there thing. We go. Yeah, there you go. See, there's a perfect opportunity to okay, adjust uh, that little arc a little bit on the fly. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so focus rotate from Talison, assuming that Nora is going to hop over her. If Nora bumps Talison, she'll have a range one shot on that yeah. poor A wing. Kevin's got Swindle. a kill box set up. He's thinking they're going to blow by or try to K around, and he's just going to light them up with these A wings. The charge token at the bottom of the screen does belong to Talison. Oh it boy. is Talison's um, pilot ability uh, one. So Evan would have had to go. Okay, so Victor, very we fast. have them labeled incorrectly. <laughs> Number one is Talison. Well, here's a block. Kind of figured that. Yeah. So Lulo is number one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Victor, there's something else I've noticed, which is very odd. Um, on the Rebel side, on the left-hand side of the screen, underneath the emblem of Nora Wexley's ARC-170 ship is usually where the points cost of Nora's ship renders oh, in the overlay. Yeah. True. Um, just a tiny little thing, but I thought I'd point it. I did notice it in one of the videos from the system open as well, but... Just goes to show that Victor and Travis always hard at work at making their overlay look great, folks. And you know what? They do a great job for us. So if you like what you see, like tuning into our content, uh, VWTV Live does have a YouTube page and a Twitch channel. Feel free to run over there and show your love. So like, subscribe, send something over to Patreon if you wish. And uh, big thanks to them from on behalf of the PTL uh, for all what they do. Did you catch any of the live streams from the, uh, the system open, Stevie? A little bit, yep. Because you were working that weekend. You I was make working it, right? that weekend. Yeah. Bummer. It happens. It does. We're Gain, into gainful hyperspace. employment is, is a good thing. Yeah, we're heading into hyperspace trials, so uh, I have plenty of those dialed in. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Uh, there's four or five, what, nine happening in Ontario this year. Yeah. I think I'll at least Devo, get out what's the, the count up to on hyperspace trials in Ontario? Is it nine? Or is it nine in Canada so far? 16 in Canada. 16 in Canada. Mon Dieu. Wow. Eight within striking distance of T dot. We got action here on the table here. Sorry, folks. Luke measuring for range on Talison. No, Talison's going to shoot first because Kelvin has player one. Okay, Luke taking one. One. Yeah. Luke taking a plink there. Uh, Lulo will get to shoot. I believe Lulo has range one on. Luke as well. No, Luke is, yeah, Luke's had his shots at him. Okay, so Luke is taking a shoot back. Evan just deciding which one of these pesky A-wings he wants to have at right now with, uh, with he uh, has the son of the chosen one here. Ooh, oh, man. That's rough. Going to have to spend two force tokens on that one. One going Plink's through. Another shield. Yeah. Plink on Tally. to Taliesin's shields there. Ford eye shot from Nora on the same target. And yeah. Why did Talison cleanly evades Nora's four die range one shot? Why did Kelvin roll three dice there? On Talison? Because yeah. Lulo is number one. Nora shot at Talison. Oh, yeah. I see. Got yeah. it. Okay, so three results there from one of the Blue Squadron A Wings. Luke taking some damage. And then. Just deciding if A-Wing number four is in range one of Luke as well. I think so. Very close. Evan getting in there with that lovely Wave Championship range ruler that he won. Two shots from the Blue Squadron recruit. Okay, one more from Luke. Lulo's number one? Okay, well, then I think Kelvin oh. may have rolled too many dice there. I think so. No. Fly casual. Yeah, like... Mm. It's passed. Evan's got to catch it. I don't, you know what, I'm sure we're not seeing something right because Evan's a very good player. So Exactly. Like yeah. We're All watching right, it so as close as closely as we can. There's a lot of ships on the board right now. Well, we got Kelvin deciding what he's going to have to do with his squad here. Most of the A-Wings are going to be in a great position to blow past the formation, rotate their guns, and finish off a couple of the T-65 X-Wings here. I've got to admit, um, I'm shocked... Evan lived through that as well as he did. Yeah, Luke definitely had the like, force to spend. Yeah. But, again, you're right. I mean, he, That's he not that bad, though, right? Like, you come out with a bumped ace. Mm -hmm. um, I think he lost a haul on that, maybe. That's 
I mean, about as good as you can expect, I think. Well, no, Luke Luke took two shields and two hull on that one. Ah, on that yeah. last one there. Wedge has got three hull left. Luke is sitting on two hull at half health. Kelvin's got 69 points destroyed, half health on both the T65 X-Wings there. I mean, with this type of list, I doubt it's going to go to time. Yeah. I didn't see it happening anyway. No, I don't see it happening either. I think that once the formation clears, um, the A-Wings will need one or two turns to come around. But, um, no, I mean, Evan needs to take one of Kelvin's pieces off the board this turn if he wants to stay in this game. So Kelvin's got the dial set for three of his A-Wings and his T-70. Beautiful dials decked out there, painted him himself, the Michelangelo miniatures, we call him. Yeah, they look great. Do you have any ships that he's done for you? Dash. Your dash, of yeah. course. I have my ghosts, yeah. of course. I love it. Um, and my K-Wing. He did the the K-Wing in the colors of a British RAF yeah. Spitfire yep, yep, bomber. That's great. Yeah, I love it. I'd love to see an ARC-170 painted as a Warthog. as a, spi as a Spitfire oh, bomber. Oh, I want to see a Warthog one. A Warthog, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, yeah, the Warthog would be so cool. I remember somebody took the guns off the bottom of one of the ARC-70s and put them on an E-Wing model. Yeah, I do remember that. So that was somebody local, right? Probably. Yeah, I wonder who did that. I, I know I've seen the model before. Hmm. So this is great. Yeah, I'm wondering if this is going to be, um, I mean, outside of Nora being in that ARC with Leia, these are very common lists. Like, Kelvin's flying a list that's hyperspace legal that we could easily see. Yeah, there's not a tremendous amount in the Resistance or the First Order factions that's not right. hyperspace legal, uh, with the exception of things like biohexadec codes and biohexacrypt codes or whatever it is in, uh, in First Order. This just I feels very on meta at the moment. Yeah, I mean, high, wings, yeah. Three high ship count. Three ship lists are kind of like the new two ship lists. Like if yeah. you're coming with, at least in our area, if you're coming with less than three ships, you're, you're going to have a quick game. Yeah, it's really, like, we ha do not see two ship lists, really, in this area. Every once in a while, but certainly not with any regularity. I can't think of any of, like, the competitive players that are really trying to fly that, li like, a two ship list. I mean, you've got um, plenty of players who, who, who will throw two ship lists on the table for something casual. Yes. My favorite one being uh, a 104-point Asajj and a 96-point Guri with no bid. Yolo. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Best part is Guri has swarm tactics so that Asajj can just shoot first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> Max lulls. Okay, so Evan's going to need to decide what he wants to do here. This may be the turn to pop Leia. Uh, Wed Wedge could probably Talon roll here. Uh, Luke could probably K-turn. We'll see what's going to happen. Okay, so the Blue Squadron PS1s are going to go first. See, the thing is, is does he want to K-turn? Well, or should he just follow that A-Wing? Like, you could just wreck Tally right now if you're a uh, Blue Squad if you wanted to by not K-turning. Evan's got to decide what he wants as a priority. He's got to decide who he wants to try and get out of there. Um, I feel like the PS1 A-Wings can probably wait till last. He's got to take out Bastion or he's got to take out Lulo. Lulo's doing a lot of damage with those uh, with those three dice, right? Yep. Yeah, those you've got it uh, on this list, especially since he has Nora with her ability. Yeah. I'd be looking to pop a three dice ship, three to four dice ship right away. Kelvin sporting those absolutely a sexy red squadron templates he wanted the system open. They look great. They do. All right, so we had a blue three bank from the rookie, and barrel roll rotate for a stress. Nice yeah. move. I like it. Maintains arc on Nora, possibly gets arc on Luke, depending on where he goes. Bastion is stressed. It's going to see where he goes. Opening the foils, doing a two bank. Okay. Setting up for that Talon roll next turn, probably. Right. He might just come around. I don't even know if he'll Talon. It'll give us an idea of what Kelvin's doing if he decides to Talon, for sure. Yeah. I'm wondering if he's just going to disengage and move back around. Oh, he did close the foils after all. Apologies. They are open. Oh, you set the wrong card up. Okay, no problem. We're doing real well tonight, eh? All three of us. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, okay, so we got the two forward, which pro tip does clear a medium base. Sure does. None of that. Have to check for the nub stuff like a big base ship. Okay, so 
Tally is going to go. Why does Lulo have the charge if Lulo is number two? That's what I don't understand. Lulo's supposed to have... Uh, I believe that Lulo is supposed to be number two because Talison has the charge. It's part of her shtick as the... Um, as oh, the did he just bump his own? Yeah, he did. Yeah, tried to do the 4K. Does not fit. Nora trying to get out of dodge. Isn't going to escape A-Wing number Four. four's rear arc, it looks like. Nora going to have to settle for a rear arc shot at I mean, some positive note, she's range one. Well, so she gets that, get that free, free evade, evade, absolutely. So she doesn't have to worry too, too much about... Uh, tally shot or even um, Lulo shot. Oh, he has a. Oh, M9G8. I see. Okay, that makes total sense. So, hmm. understood. So, the charge token you're seeing attached to Lulo, which is uh, A Wing number one in the center of your screen is actually not a charge token. It's not Tally's, Talison's charge. It is the M9G8 um, uh, uh, droid lock from Lieutenant Bastion. Right. Fully understood. Thank you, Victor. So Lulo basically with 1.0 Predator there. Nice. Rerolling one die on offense. That's a spicy combination. That's good. This is a nice list, honestly. Yeah. I really like it. So it is confirmed that Evan has indeed popped Leia, Leia this turn. So we can remove the three charges on Leia there, Victor. Thank you. Uh, Nora did the, the K turn that failed. That's why she didn't take a stress. Wedge doing uh, a white talon roll, staying stressed. Going to use the back position to gain arc on A-wing number four, it looks yep. like. And where's Luke going to go? Or Luke's moved already. So apologies. Apologies. No, I actually don't know if Evan popped Leia or not. Uh, Wedge is stressed. Yeah, Wedge is stressed. He's measuring. Victor. Though. It, it, oh, he's just run off to the table. Oh, yeah, okay, so Wedge taking shooting. a shot. Hit crit. Man. Range three evaded. Okay, so Talison going to shoot first. Or sorry, Lulo going to shoot first. One evade. Added one. Taken one. One shield off of Nora. Victor, could you reverse red icons two and three, please? Talison going to measure for rear arc here. Looks like range two to Luke. So Luke gaining a force pack. Nothing from nobody. Heroic has now triggered twice. Yep. Cleanly evaded by Skywalker. No damage. Ironic that it was Talison who just triggered heroic too. <laughs> yeah. Folks, fun fun fact, it is Talison in the heroic card. Okay, one reroll, nothing from nobody. Okay, spending that Luke doing one. Kelvin is rolling paint like hot fire. Yes, he is. Nora gonna take her rear arc shot on looks like Lulo as well. With that being said, one. he has the token. For it to be fine. Kelvin but, continuing like, to roll just evades rolling like hot it's fire. his job. Evan showing a little bit of frustration. His PS1 A Wing's going to do their work here. Luke not taking any damage there. Luke out of force. Does have range, does have arc. Sorry, does have range, does he have arc? We are going to ask for an objective. Bystander to measure arc and see if A-wing number four has arc on the arc. <laughs> I think he's going to get that corner. Yeah, if anything, he's nicking the corner because Nora's on a bit of a, an angle there. Yeah. So it's the bottom right-hand corner of her base plate, um, yep. our top left corner. Definitely not an arc. The question is whether or not the, the top corner, if there's any light of day between that um, system open range ruler. No, it's calling it out. Call from the table is that it is not in arc. So turn complete. Score has improved for Evan. Not enough. <laughs> not Only enough. took one shield in that turn. One shield off of Nora for, what was it, one, two, three, four, four shots that turn? Yeah. Not a bad shtick. Wedge about to clear his stress with a leisurely one bank, take his choice of Pro Torp um, 
victims. Yeah, 100%. Lulo going to have to decide where she wants to go. Lulo, Talison, and Bastion might just... I would just leisurely the bank up. Honestly, I would just, I think, bank up and keep your arc well, working. Well, Kelvin has the opportunity to kind of close the noose around Luke. This Luke's turn. in a bad spot. Lulo, Talison, and Bastion, both, all, or so all three of them there. Lulo's got that M9G8 reroll, so if Luke can get in there and nuke Bastion before he shoots, very ooh, tough one. We're expecting one. four hall yeah. on. Ooh. That's a tough one. Yeah, Victor, if you wouldn't mind removing one of the charges off of Wedge's proton torpedoes. Thank you. He's shot one already. Leia is only got one charge. She spent last turn, and she has recharged one charge. Yeah, Wedge, Wedge did a Talon roll last turn while stressed, so it had to have been Leia. Yeah. Wow. Kelvin's got all the options in the world. That's a great thing about Kelvin's list is it can converge for that initial engagement. Yep, sure can. Gum up the formation on turn two, deny actions, and then on turns three and four, he spreads the A-wings out. He's getting range three and two shots for one or two turns, and then he's right back at you again. I mean, the other thing is that with that rear arc, when you disengage, you still shoot. Yeah. Like, their, their time on target is absolutely crazy. Stay on target. M9G8 on Lulo. I love it. Casual two bank left. Yeah, this is a sneaky list. It's good. One thing, you know, Lula might even just two straight focus boost and just four die rear arc shoot Luke. Yeah, I mean, I think if I were Tally right now uh, or Lulo, I'd be just trying to make sure my arc stays on Luke. I would put in multiple shots on Luke and see if you can burn him down this coming around. Well, the only one of those three ships that Luke's going to be able to shoot at this turn that has the option to PS kill is Bastion. Even if he shoots and kills one of the other two A-wings, they're still going to get to shoot back at him. Yep. So Evan has to decide whether or not he thinks that he can trade the son of the chosen one for one of those A-wings. Looks like Kelvin has the high ground. Kelvin's got the high ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very curious about where Nora's going to go. I think Nora might I think try. Nora's gonna turn around, like try to turn around that smaller rock and come around. The thing is, I'm pretty sure Kelvin's just gonna take number five and can that. Yeah. No, it's a good move. Still got that arc pointing backwards. He doesn't really need to engage Wedge and Nora right now. Like he should be focused on burning Luke down, and he certainly knows that. So. Yeah. So five and four, just gonna focus, set up for those one and three turns next turn. Bastion taking the uh, the Talon roll. So he's going to be in a lovely position to keep pressure on Luke. The two A-wings are going to be able to take shots on Nora, who is not going to have a range one buddy this turn. Now the question is, where does Luke and... No, that's right, the A-wings go first. Apologies. Yep. Yeah. So we definitely saw that coming. Lulo going to focus... Going to take a stress and rotate the arc 100, 360 degrees and point it back backwards. Wow. It is a turret arc. So good. And Talison coming about here. Focus rotate, it looks like. Yeah. Yep. Nora doing, it looks like a three hard. Get a gain arc on A-wing number five. Sacrificing her action. You know, I think she has to at this point. Like, Evan's... I, I see if Evan called what Kelvin was going to do with those A-wings. He doesn't have a very fast maneuver in his hand. <laughs> the most rebel move out One there. One forward to victory, <laughs> folks. Might take a bear roll and get out of Lulo's arc here and just lay into Lulo. Yeah, it's a tough call. you got to get out of one of those arcs, man. Oh, boy. Luckily, it's a little noisy in here, so they can't hear us on the table. Yeah, the table is quite far away from us right now in the game store, and there are plenty of people here. There's no way they can hear us. Now you got Lulo's rear arc when he when she's stressed is four dice, and she's got M9 G8 in a focus. Yeah, you got to dodge that arc. So Luke's foils open again. Going to try and nuke Lulo. Four versus two. Luke has four tokens. He's got one, but I think he's going to go into Bastion. To be honest, yeah. I don't think he's going to go after Lulo. Wedge clearing stress, getting back in the fight opening the foils and has to decide if he wants to take a regular good old-fashioned shot or whether he wants to try and proton torpedo uh, somebody. Unfortunately, if you dump a proton torpedo into A-wing number four at this point, I doubt you're going to kill it, and that's an unfortunate use of six points. 
Ah, uh, yeah. So Evan opting to try for max damage. I doubt that's what he was really wanting, to be honest. I, I mean, I guess you've got to burn it. Like, he's got to be playing catch up at this point. Four versus two coming on this A-wing here. Oh, that's the third time that he's rolled that result on it. Oof. What a disappointment. Two crits, only one going through. Kelvin's just going to keep the focus token and take two shields on that blue squadron recruit. Positively ideal for Mr. Lau. So there's Tally shooting at Luke, uh, evaded. Lulo no shot. Luke's coming up next. Going to decide who's going to fire at. I'm Luke curious. Oh, nope, Nora's going to shoot first. Okay, so three dice from Nora. Hot wow. steaming garbage. Evaded. Kelvin's green dice starting to cool off just a little bit. We'll see if that carries into the late game at this point. Now, this is the tough choice. This is the one where Evan says to himself, okay, do I nuke Lulo? Do I go for Bastion, who's carrying M9G8? Do I shoot at Taliesin, who doesn't have a token? All you three know, good choices. That's kind of the beauty of these A-wings, though, is even as your green dice cools off a little bit, as long as he's holding on to that token, A-wings can take a shot. Even if he blanks out, A-wings can take a hit. I think we had the force count wrong on Luke there. He had recharged one last Holy turn. Wow. Yeah. It's like the third time Kelvin's naddied out on uh, on shots from Evan there. No damage coming into the A-wing there. Who did Kelvin... Sorry, hang on a second. Did Kelvin just roll too many dice again on, on Lulo? I, he might have been shooting Bash. I have no idea who he was shooting. No, he rolled three dice. No, we were right and we were wrong. So Luke did, in fact, take a range one shot on Lulo, but I completely forgot that Taliesin's pilot ability. Victor, you throw up Taliesin's pilot ability on the screen for us. The Taliesin, of course, folks, if the attacker is in Taliesin's bullseye arc, the defender rolls an extra die. Ooh. Beautiful positioning by Kelvin Lau there. I would Ooh. not have seen that coming either. <laughs> you know, this is how you can tell that Kelvin's played these ships often, that's a trigger that I would definitely forget until you start sinking reps into this type of list. I said it on the weekend at the system, Stevie. Whoever in their great wisdom at FFG thought it was a good idea to give Kelvin Lau A-wings that can shoot backwards was sadly mistaken. <laughs> the abilities, they're actually good. Yeah. Wounded pilot coming through on Nora Wexley there. I was actually really shocked when... Um, OP gave the Resistance A's a second talent. A second talent slot? Yeah. Why is that? I thought Rebels were going to get it only, just because they're a little less good A-wings. They're cheaper, but, boy, the, like, RZ2s don't need no, two No, they need Heroic and Crack Shot. Right, I mean, like... Or Heroic and Trick Shot, so it, three points. It's nice when they have a second one, but uh, they were fine prior do you have another four points after that give them advanced optics <laughs> like whatever so yeah as we uh, as we suspected um the two blue squadron recruits with their measly little pea shooters shooting backwards uh dumping a wounded pilot crit into nora wexley there she's gonna have to clear that otherwise the wounded pilot will will cause damage to her as well so yep wedge is out of pro torps luke has pro torps but i don't think he's gonna have a pro tarp uh target this turn be very difficult for him to get out of the situation he's in alive because of course all Bastion has to do is hop over the formation then Lulo oh, yeah. casually two banks right keeps the arc pacing backwards I'm Ta on target man tally's They're gonna good. two turn or two bank and block Luke's wherever he's going so it's uh it's a tough go for for Evan right now he's already got half health on his X wings one more from Nora, and she's at half health as well. And then Evans needs to start killing A-Wings. He's already got half health on they're starting one of the A-Wings and Lulo. They're starting to get a little lower. You know, like they're finally, he is starting to put, into some, put in some damage, but. Well, that's the thing. This if, is if, uphill, man. If, t if Kelvin takes Evan to the late game and he's got two A-Wings versus Luke, Luke can take A-Wings. He just gets those force recharges every turn. I mean, one blank and you sneak one through, sure, but... Yeah, it's K-9 
can he, though? Like, I don't know. Evan's got to get rid of those X-Wings, man. Sorry, uh, Kelvin has to get rid of those X-Wings, I should say. Let's see how bullish Evan goes with Wedge. Okay, so I think he's going to really turn. come in. Lulo definitely not going to be able to do what I thought he was going to do this turn. Shows shows what I know about Kelvin. Focus rotate from that one. Facing forward. One hard going to probably try and block Nora here. Kelvin going to take the barrel roll downboard. Just taking a barrel roll. Marking Luke. Marking Lulo. Ah, uh, that's what I was saying. We're getting we're getting Bastion out of there. Okay. Bastion keeping the M9G8 target lock on Lulo. See, this is why I'm not sure if it was a great idea to not shoot that X-Wing last round. Because if he did, Wedge would be in a really good spot to kill him right now. I don't disagree with you. I, I still think that Lulo's the biggest threat on the board. Oh, I do too. Especially um, with that M9G8 reroll. At this point, he needs to just start deleting ships just yeah. to catch up on ship count a little bit um kelvin right right now has so many arcs out there to even try to get around that it's uphill i mean how do you run from this list at the moment with three ships i mean that x-wing can maybe get out if it wants to try you could do like a straight kelvin again using that um wait here i'm gonna have a quick judge question no. mr devon I don't judge anymore. I'm, do I'm retired. do it's the A wings arc. have the there ability to opt to spend it if they if they declare their action as a rotate? Do they have to rotate it to a different direction, or can they rotate it back all the way around to the position it started in? Off the top of my noggin, which is probably wrong, I believe that you can rotate arc to the same arc. Yeah. But you, you like I said, it's probably wrong. Okay. Well, so we'll find out afterwards. Pull up the PDF and have a look. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good. It's a good. Um, uh, good suggestion there. So, when in doubt, read the rules. It's good advice, actually. I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> you can read the rules. They're not that complete. <laughs> Sometimes the rules are just frustrating, folks. <laughs> okay. It's tough, right? There's a lot of edge cases. Um, there's so m This game is growing so much with so many activity, like different triggers yeah. and things coming in right now that... I mean, clearly it's on FFG to write rules that support their game, but as the game expands in complexity, it's easier and easier to find something that really isn't that well defined. Okay, the rotate action. Uh, pilots can rotate to alert a gunner or aim one of the ship's turret main armaments. When a ship performs the rotate action, it rotates the turret arc indicator to select any other standard arc. Yep. Any other standard Correct. arc. If so an arc rotate rotates a double arc, if an ability instructs a ship to rotate its... Uh, turret arc indicator. This is different than doing the action. Ship rotates indicator without performing the action. If a ship rotates a double turret arc indicator. What it does shut down though is with those rules is the ability to say you're rotating and leave it in the same spot, which is nice for Tat. Like somebody like Lulo who really wants that extra die some of the time. No, I think uh, it says it rotates the turret arc indicator to select any other. Any other arc. Standard. So you can't leave it in the same spot. Correct. You yeah. have to rotate. Okay. We got some action coming up on this turn. We're going to see what, uh, what we're doing uh, here. Wedge, take that initial shot on Bastion. Range two. He, I think right now Evan's deciding does he want to go range one into Tally or uh, try to dump some fire into Bastion. I don't honestly know. Uh, he's got to kill Lulo, but leaving that T-70 out there with M9G8s propping up Lulo's efficiency. I am 0 for 2 trying to get in the brain of Kelvin Lau. Lulo took a focus, red boost off the board, which fails, and you stay put and take the stress. Hashtag loophole. <laughs> Kelvin's a good player. He's a good player. <laughs> he's a good player. Okay, so A-Wing... Focusing up, not taking any damage. Mon dieu. Those God, that's so sneaky, <laughs> though. He's running up by die. the board edge so he can fail boost off the board edge to get the stress. Oh, hit, hit, crit. One going through. It's a crit. I think that's on number... Yep. Okay. Kelvin's going to shoot again. Ooh. Just, yep, spending the focus. Taking three. That's uh, Wedge. Wedge is dead, I yeah, think. Like Wedge is dead there. He doesn't have a focus token, so he's going down. <laughs> 
Got one, takes two. Wedge sitting on a fuel leak. Yeah. Down he goes. By Mr. Antilles. Just the one from Nora, a long bomb on A-wing number five here. Yeah, I mean, realistically, you're not getting anything here. Evaded. Luke is out of Lulo's arc, which is good. But Talison going to take her shot here. Focusing up for two. One getting through on Luke there. And that A-wing is going to take... Uh, nothing there. Bastion does have arc on Nora. Two from Bastion on Nora's back plate there. Nora taking one. I've been getting a little frustrated. Definitely understandable. Not a great position for him to be in here. No. And this is why this list is this type of list is so good. Uh, these A wings have great dial, great positioning, um, really nice action bar, and can just pretty much put themselves where they need to and still get shots. Yeah, it also helps when you're rolling like Kelvin's rolling too. But they do roll a lot of green dice, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, you're, 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 you're just increasing your over your potential, right? I mean, if the more green dice you're I just love the, despite the fact that Lulo's got that negative one agility ability for just turning it on, doesn't that matter. Kelvin's still been able to keep Talison in the fight or a range three or something like that that keeps Lulo doing damage every turn or keeping Evan making positional decisions that, that keep... The M9G8 thing is... Nasty good. Yeah, like that's really good really on Lulo. Good. Right? <laughs> really, really good. Because I had to think to yourself, like, okay, how do I get an M9? G how do I get a reroll out of my rear arc? Predator out the front. Great. What happens if my bullseye is forward and I'm shooting backwards? Well, it's also the idea that in Evan's firing order, Lulo fires fairly early. Yep. Right. So odds are, if damage comes in, he still has that option of switching that tar target lock onto an opponent to take his return shot with Bastion if he wants to. And then the next round, just retarget lock Lulo. Okay, so the rookie X-Wing chasing Luke here. Don't know if he's gonna get this A-Wing around Nora's big medium base here, looks okay. I don't know, Tim, like the question, if it was two A-Wings versus Luke, would Luke win? I, I, I guess I, we'll find out. I don't know, man, like, would he? Because there's a lot, like, they can really maneuver, and they've got a far better dial than Luke does, where I think it would be a hard... There's going to be a lot of rounds, potentially, where Luke's probably not going to shoot, where he'll still eat those little two dice shots back. So in this particular case, I think it's, you know, the fact that Luke is player two, that's a huge advantage. He's dodged two pretty significant kill shot opportunities from Kelvin at this point. True. Um... You know whether or not Luke can do it in the in the late game is a big question about what initiatives are what initiatives are he up against. Um, you know the A wings aren't going to do a lot of damage from range two or three, I don't think, because Luke's got his force ability. It's true. Um, That's true. But they can get it. To your point, they can get right in there, and A wings can put damage through on two agility ships without that much difficulty when they get in there tight. Or if you blow past them right. and do that range one rear arc shot, even with no mods sometimes, you're going to push damage through on low agility ships. I mean, ships. that two dice plank in 1.0 wasn't great because people were sitting behind those token stacks. Yeah. In 2.0, two dice attacks still aren't great, but with these ships, the amount of time you potentially can sit range one with the arc the way that it is, that it is um, they can heap damage on pretty well. Agreed. Okay, so... Kelvin put Talison in a position wow. to keep Nora in bullseye so that if Nora does a leisurely one bank and wants to shoot at Bastion, Bastion can roll three agility dice there. Luke doing the Talon roll, getting Arc on the... He's going to try to pro torp it. No, I mean, Luke doesn't have... Um, oh, man. Luke is just on Talon rolls. Luke's stressed, is he? Uh, so Luke, I think it's going to try to use his no, last... No, he used Leia. Yeah. He used Leia. We triggered Leia this turn there, uh, Victor. Thank you. You might as well. I mean, why not? Okay, so Talison and or Lulo goes first. Nora, Talison shoots first. Nora. Ah, wonderful. Okay, so Bastion going to use his pilot ability, throwing 
Lieutenant Bastion up on the screen if we can there, Victor. Uh, Nora took a damage card, so the M9G8 target lock from Bastion goes on to Nora so that Kelvin can say, you have to reroll one of your dice. Hit, hit, oh. and crit, and the crit is not a direct hit. Bastion lives. Lulo has no arc this turn. Boy, is that the first round of combat that she hasn't? That Lulo has had no shot? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to... Hold on. Okay, so the M9G8 reroll back into a crit. Gotta love that. That works. Talison checking for her bullseye arc here, seeing if they clip that back left corner. Bastion rolling three of eight dice and gets <laughs> it. Jesus. Kelvin showing his opponent just... Complete savagery. Three dice from the blue squadron A wing up there. One cock die. Oh, Three man. hits. It there rolled goes from a Luke. crit to a hit, and that's game. Yeah. Evan's gonna call it there, I believe, folks. Luke that's is tough. dead. The thing is, is Kelvin's dice were great this game, but he had tokens too. So in the event that, I, like, sure he rolled plenty of evades. But he had the focus tokens in this game to where if he needed to spend them, he could have. He just didn't need them. Position, tokens, target priority. Yeah. It was a fundamental how-to on how to how to fly X-Wing match. And thank yeah. you uh, to both our players for showing us in. We are your hosts. I'm Timbo Slice. I'm Stephen Moss-Isley. And we are signing off, folks.